This is Pat Solver with the Dr. Ways In, and we're going to talk about electronic health records today, sort of. I have with me entrepreneur Emilio Golan. Did I say that right? You got it. Excellent. And he is a serial entrepreneur, and his venture that we're going to talk about today is Robin Healthcare. And, um, you know, I think I'll just let you describe what it is. It's really very cool. Sure. So Robin is a device placed in the room with the physician and the patient. And instead of the physician doing this, typing, looking over his shoulder, checking in every once in a while, they just get to talk to the patient, keep eye contact, actually just have a conversation. And that's the way we used that, to do it. Exactly. And that's what we were trying to create again, is place this device and you get to forget about the documentation part and just focus on the patient care. So I understand what you've done is you've developed an artificial intelligence mechanism to be able to capture the conversation, um, but uh, how does that turn it into a note? I mean, what, what, what are the steps in going from me examining you and, and actually ending up with a note that gets ported into my electronic health record? Sure, so for the physician, it's kind of like this magical experience, right? You just get to focus on the patient. Notes show up in your EMR. You don't have to do anything different. Just focus on the patient. On our end, you can imagine there's a ton of work that goes into it. So the first thing is that we are capturing the audio and optional video. And so videos for patient says it hurts here, hurts when I do this, comes in with a wheelchair, all that can be captured. And then the first thing the machine does is try to extract all the clinical knowledge. So if you're talking about Game of Thrones, or the weather, or a recent trip to Hawaii, it is filtering all that out, and it's looking for the knee pain, the severity, tingling, medications, identifying those and extracting it out of the, out of the conversation, and then placing it within the note. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Um, so you've built your AI algorithms so that if I'm just blah, blah, blah in about you know, my daughter's wedding, you aren't capturing that but it knows when I'm actually responding to clinical questions and talking about the reason why I've come to the visit. Right, exactly. We have to figure out what is the relevant information, and that's actually one of the really hard parts, is what is irrelevant, and then what are the pieces that we need to capture for the note. And previous aspirin use is different than current aspirin use, which is different than I recommend aspirin use. And so knowing exactly where to place that aspirin is really important. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of people are, uh, do think about AI as magic, or probably the word I hear the most is it's a black box. Right. But in actual fact, AI, um, if you go into the black box, it's all about the people, right? It's the people who develop the algorithms. So who developed your algorithms? How do you tweak them? How do you keep them current? How do you, how do, you do this thing they call machine learning, which I actually think is, is really people teaching the machine? Well, that's a really important point, is that machines learn best from repetition, things that a human can do again and again and again, and it can pick up those patterns. And so we have a fantastic technical team that you know, spans from UC Berkeley, some former folks from Google who are helping build out those algorithms. Uh, but the real key is having the data and breaking down clinical visits into something that's repeatable little chunks that we've seen again and again that the machine can learn. So the first time I say, it's your left knee that hurts, right? The machine might say, what, do you what, mean? Is what side? Right? Yeah. Is it left or right? Or I'm depressed because my mother recently was diagnosed with cancer. Who has the depression? Who has the cancer? Figuring these, teasing these things out is difficult. When you see it again and again, the machine can learn, okay, right is used differently here. They're actually talking about the left knee, and it can capture that and document it. And how long has it taken you to build this out? So we've been working on Robin for about a year and a half. Which is, which is really a very short period of time. And as you know, there's been a lot of development in the NLP ML kind of base algorithms. Why, why don't you explain NLP? Sure. So natural language processing, we're all getting more used to Google Home, Alexa in our houses doing these tasks, and they're... You know, it's fascinating what they can do. And I think when you take that to medicine, there's kind of a pause of this really needs to be right. 
So you ask Alexa to play a, a song. If it plays the wrong song, no big deal. Right. No big deal. You try and document a medication or a diagnosis. It needs to be correct. Very low tolerance for error in medicine. And so an extra piece that we have to do at Robin is ensure the accuracy of everything. And how do you do that? I understand that you use some, some human beings for that. Absolutely. So human in the loop as the machine learns more and more. So every note we do gets QA'd by a human, and then the machine can learn from any corrections that human made on the algorithm. On and so who, who are these humans, and how does it relate to what a lot of doctors are using right now, which is to have an actual human in the room called a scribe who's capturing the information and creating the note, but, but adding a, another person to the room? How, how, how do you guys put all that together? Yeah, so... The about 5% of the market now hires a human to follow them around and document as they talk with patients. And the challenges there have been, one, you have another human in this small room kind of invading that space. The second is it's expensive to have a human all day follow you around to type. And then the last is that that human gets sick, and even more so, they're doing the job to go off to medical school. (laughs) <laughs> right. So you train them and then <laughs> hopefully they get into medical school and you have to train another one. They leave typically after nine months. Oh. And so you train them, takes a few months. They're with you for six months. It's like the golden age. They're doing all your notes and then they're gone. So Robin, for the experience of the physician, very similar, except that scribe never gets sick, never goes off to medical school much cheaper than having a human and isn't in the room with you exactly and so it's again this like sanctuary of patient and doctor on our end the humans that are doing our review are very similar to the same demographic that would be a medical scribe in the traditional sense the difference here is that they are super powered by the ai algorithms that's doing the job before them and they're really reviewing and guiding that algorithm so if I got that right, what you're saying is that Robin takes, does the first draft and the scribe reviews it and does the next draft. And then I'm assuming the physician, since he or she has the ultimate responsibility, does the final draft. Exactly. So no matter what solution physicians use now, whether it be dictation with Dragon or transcription service overseas or an in-person scribe, the physician always does the final review. So, um, so I think it's really cool, and I think you're solving a huge problem because we do know that the EHR increasingly is being blamed not on, only for disrupting the doctor-patient relationship, but for really <laughs> ruining the lives of doctors. I mean, it's really uh, been pointed to as one of the prime issues for physician burnout that we know is rampant. So tell us a little bit about where you are in the process of your company. Um, do you have customers? Are real doctors and real patients involved in, in using Robin? Yeah. And a little bit about uh, how you got the money to get this far and whether you're making any money now. Sure. Maybe I'll start at the beginning of the story really quickly. So I was at UCSF doing rotations. Because you are one of those medical students, (laughs) right? Exactly. (laughs) And I was seeing my attendings spend countless hours on the computer typing away. And at the beginning of rotations, attendings are you know, telling you you should do this practice, my specialty is great, you know, you should consider it. And one of my attendings started that way and then halfway through quit. And quit, pra- quit, quit practice. Quit that practice. That's a good role model. <laughs> well, because she had, and honestly, in terms of a role model physician, this was a physician I'd want to be. Caring, there for the right reason, someone I'd want to send my family to. And she had a three-year-old and a seven-year-old at home, no time, for, no time with them. And so it's really just this shocking moment for me to see in training a physician who was excellent be stopped, be prevented from practicing by the EHR and these tasks. And so that was my wake-up call of like, oh, my goodness, something needs to be done. Talk to other physicians, same story. It's the number one reason for burnout nationally. 62% say it's the number one reason why they're burning out. So we started Robin testing, refining the algorithms, and then last December we raised three and a half million. From venture capital? From venture capitalists. 
and some great partners and have since been building, hiring the engineers to really scale it out. So we have paying customers in different, states, in different states across the country, mainly orthopedics, to really focus our algorithms to start and are just expanding and growing and giving it to more docs. So they're paying for the service now. We've seen t maybe 25,000 patients so far. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, how are you doing? Um, how much of an individual note does Robin generate versus how much is actually created by the scribe, who I assume when they can't understand what Robin sent them has to actually listen to the recording? Yes, they will review the recording and make sure it's all right. Now, it depends. Um, depends on the complexity of the case. Depends on whether it's a follow-up patient or a new patient, whether there's context. Depends how many notes we've done for that physician, how much of their behaviors have been learned. And so we see it as a triage where the simple cases get automated much faster. And then the comp- 80%. Exactly. And then these complex cases may always need some level of human review. You know, some notes and some visits, physicians have difficult times summarizing what actually happened. And how much, um, how much would you say it costs to produce a simple note? It's an interesting question. So when 80% of the note is done by, oh, we've seen you before. We know you're coming back after a operative visit. We know what most likely you're going to say. It's very cheap to do those notes. It might just take 30 seconds for that note to be kind of QA'd and sent. Complex patients, a whole other story. And really, so that's kind of the game with Robin is we are automating as fast as the quality allows. And so these physicians, we've had physicians say, you saved me 15 hours in a single week. Yeah, 15 hours of an orthopedist time is a lot of money. It's a lot <laughs> of money. And that's part of what, when you start to look at this, there's so many winners here. The physicians are saving hours of time. They can see more patients if they want it. They could make more money using Robin than they were before, but more so than that, they get to go home on time, see their family. That same physician said, I finally got to put my new son to bed for the first time after Robin. And he was 15? 15 hours. <laughs> he was oh, no. <laughs> 15 years old. Um, but that's the kind of story that I'd love to hear. And then patients on the other side are saying, I love that the physician just gets to look at me and maintain eye contact rather than this. Or if you've been to the physician recently, they might dictate really quickly in front of you. They might go in and out so that they have time to chart outside of the room. So really it extracts all that time so that there's more of this happening in the clinic room. And that's fantastic because both doctors and patients say that's a part of the joy of medicine Absolutely. is the physician-patient interaction. Uh, so um, one last question, it's actually two parts. Sure. What's next for Robin uh, going from, let's say, once you've nailed the orthopedic note, yep. Yep. Um, what are you going to build out next? And then what's next for Emilio? Every physician should have something like this, right? Whether it be Robin or any other service, physicians deserve to be able to just focus on medicine. Patients deserve to have physicians that are completely focused. And the system at large deserves to have really great documentation. And the other piece to Robin is having these great notes that are correct, that you can refer to and rely on. So that's what we're working towards. Get orthopedics. There's lots of orthopedics in the country. Right. We're trying to deliver the service for them as quickly as possible. But I want to see this in every doc's office. So um, you're a fourth-year student? So what's next for Emilio is right. the question that probably anybody who's a medical student or a doctor who's watching this is wondering, is Emilio going to do a residency or is Emilio <laughs> going to do Robin? I think Emilio wonders that as well sometimes. <laughs> uh, so, so I wonder, uh, I certainly am going back to finish my degree at UCSF. Um, so they've been incredibly supportive. And I think that they just have alignment with this vision that they want to see this happen as well. Well, the chief of medicine, I know, is very interested in electronic health records. Exactly. So uh, I will be going back to UCSF to finish my degree and then working together with them and thinking about the timeline for residency or not. The more time I've spent just hearing the feedback from physicians and patients, 
the more I wonder if my contribution might be in enabling more care to happen than maybe providing it myself on the front lines. I think it's something yet to be seen. Well, I want to thank you very much, uh, not only for joining us and telling Robin's story, but for inventing this amazing device um, that could really be a game changer. A actually, it'll be a, a, a game, it'll go back to the kind of game that I experienced when I was first in training before we had electronic health records. Isn't that so interesting? Is we're trying to get back to the heart of medicine, which is focus on the patient. We have docs say, this feels like the pre-EMR days. And I think that's one of the main points as we've been developing, Robin, is we're not trying to throw some new technology at physicians. That's not the point. The point is not, Alexis, cool, let's make it for docs. The point is technology should get out of the way of practice, let docs do medicine, and let that technology happen in the background. Well, we'll let that be the last word. Thank you very much, Amelia. Okay.